Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, we are recording this. I'm just waiting for um, Dr. Abstract. Oh, <laughs> seven minutes before before the uh, meeting is slated to start. Uh, okay, and how am I doing? Hmm. Looks like I could uh, use a shave. Why am I? Yeah, it's my head on the top there. There we go. How's that? Uh, adjustments, adjustments. Uh, yeah, I am Dr. Abstract. We're going to be doing a, a Zoom meetup for the launch of Zim 014. And why don't I just show a screen capture here? Let's see, how do I do that? Whiteboards, apps, more screen share. Screen share looks good. And I'm going to sh share screen one. And what is screen one showing at the moment? Let's bring that over there and put this over here and F11 that. And we will, <laughs> my, my share uh, just went away. What the heck, where'd it go? Zoom, I tell you. There's two and one. Okay, uh, choose one. I don't know. I can't see where my share was set up to go. Okay, there we go. Screen one. Okay, and share. All right. So we're now sharing screen one. Yay. Probably don't need this big thing showing up, but I'll need to find some sort of chat window. There's a stop share, and I'm screen sharing, and there's my stuff up at the top that you probably can't see. Okay, this is the new Zim site right here. And we're all, this is sort of previewing. I don't think anybody's in here yet. I'm not sure if we have a meeting room or if you're coming in as an ID, but hopefully we'll see some others coming in soon. And then we would end up uh, repeating this <laughs> dry, dry run. <laughs> Uh, we've launched a new Zap store right here. Cool, huh? With the following Zaps right there. Good. We also have under the examples some of the new things that are in Zim. And of course, those are also available on the updates page. Here's the new the new docs. There's updates. And so these are all the Zim 014. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, hold on. That highlights the wrong color. Font. Information about the store. The new site. The editor updates. Oh, yeah. So we've done a lot of updates on the editor. How's the editor doing? The editor is right up here now. Oh, hey, <laughs> somebody's here. How's it going? How you doing, sir? Good. Is that is that you, Jesus? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, that's me. How do you how do you say your name? Is it Jesus or is it Jesus or is, how do you how do you do it? Well, uh. I say it Jesus, but uh doesn't Jesus. matter to me, you know. Okay, no, yeah, no problem. Jesus is fine. Uh welcome. I think uh, I was just getting set up here. We uh you're the first, it looks like. I don't know, is it time? Is it meeting time now? No, it's still a few more minutes, like three still, more minutes. Yeah, still still a few more minutes. I wasn't sure if there was going to be a waiting room. Good to see you. And hello, I'm Dr. Abstract. <laughs> now let's see, I've got you way over there. Why don't I move you a bit closer to my uh, good. Uh, there we go. I've got double monitor and you were way over in the corner, but now you're closer to my view. All right. I'm still logged in on the editor. That's good. Uh, I was just going through the site to make sure everything's uh, good. Also, I'm recording this. You might be recorded. I'm not sure how the recording actually uh, shows up, if it's the main screen here or if it's everybody else as well. But uh, this is being recorded, so I realized, oh no, I've recorded it, and I'm seven minutes before the meeting. What should I do? <laughs> so I just uh, started talking. Hello, Pettis. How's it going, man? Hey, good. Uh, good. Now, let's see. I, I now only see you. What happened to Jesus? 
Jesus is here as well, and we'll put you into a list. Okay, good. Now I can see everybody, including me. <laughs> and and the Zim colors. Do you guys see the Zim colors? Yep. You do know that you don't always have to use Zim colors, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's interesting. Uh, interesting for branding. I'm not sure if it works or if it doesn't. You know, <laughs> to have the the Zim colors built into Zim makes most people build Zim apps with the Zim colors. It oh, seems. Nice. You know, and I guess that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, well, welcome and hello. Uh, Carl's just coming in here too. Uh, yeah, and, and it must be time. You guys are on time. Well done. Well, one minute. I have one minute. Uh, I was just saying to Jesus that I, I came in nine minutes early and started started the recording. So <laughs> I, I then went, oh, no, I should show something. So I've been kind of um, previewing the site already on the recordings. For those of you who are coming in on a recording, welcome. I'm Dr. Abstract. We're about to start the meeting official. We don't have thousands of people yet coming in on these Zooms, <laughs> but it's it's good to see you guys as well. Uh, and Jesus, you just found us not too long ago, is that right? So you've been... Yeah, just about, uh, what, two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago? Two weeks. Oh, oh Zim yes, newbie. Yeah, Something like that. Yeah, it's amazing. I can't believe... Uh... I haven't come, I haven't found you earlier than this, but uh, it's been great so far. So keep oh, okay. up with the good work. Excellent. Yeah. Well, welcome. You've been um, uh, quite active on the forum, and that is always lovely, as well. And, and Carl, I bet you you're just wanting to say hi, aren't you? <laughs> Who have you got there? He's on mute, which is probably a, a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> we can imagine what's happening. It's uh, Otis with PJ masks. It's uh, oh. the space mount, the space shuttle of PJ masks. Is that right? It will okay. be given Zim. I don't know what a PJ is. New Zim. Yeah, we and did. Otis is very happy. Yeah, we did launch. Looks like James is coming in too. He's got um, some sort of happening. That's in waiting. And, and Pettis, I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize. I, re I heard that it was a holiday in the States, but I didn't realize it was Memorial Day. Isn't it supposed to be like a somber day? You're never going to smile, are you, today? <laughs> yeah. I already did. <laughs> you did. Oh, okay. That's good. Uh, well, welcome. Um, and hi, James. Are you able to get your video going or, or not? Oh, yeah, I'm getting there. I'm just sorry. Hello. I'm getting there. I'm just trying to add the, you. I'm trying to add my background thing. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. I can't wait to see it. Um, <laughs> if you can, when you come into a Zim Zoom, it's always fun to have some sort of uh, background that you may have made, perhaps even in Zim, uh, as your background. But you know, whatever. That's all right. Uh, I can't find how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, welcome to. Zoom interfaces. I got on here and I was trying to share my screen and I didn't want what I was showing in Zoom to be on the shared screen. So I put it over here. And then when I went to share a screen, I don't know, all chaos broke loose. I had this big number <laughs> one and a big number two. And I was going, ah, oh, help. Uh, where's my selection thing? Um, oh, so, so do you guys see the currently on, on Zoom? Do you see the <laughs> new changes to the site? Yeah. I guess you can see. Are you are you also viewing my screen share right now? There's. there's... I'm just viewing your screen. Okay. Just. All right. That's probably a good thing. I can take you through that. Um, we have changed the look of the whole site. Hopefully, that's working for everybody. We just launched it last night before going to bed. <laughs> uh, it seems to Wait. still be up and going. Oh, uh, the background here is editable so that you can change. And I'm double clicking there and getting now a hump. Yay, bringing that down. And that will stay uh, across all of your pages as well with your own custom background. I have a little little valley there that I don't like so much. Uh, hmm. Put that up there. Oh, yeah, that's not bad, huh? I can imagine a little lake going in there. So this is a, um, what do they call it? A vapor wave header. It's also featuring the plasma pods that are uh, being emitted, and that's all part of the Zim store. So we're going to talk about two things. Why don't we go into the presentation now? 
And hello, James. I see you for real uh, with your map. Now that is a real map in behind you, is it not? Yeah. Sorry, I gave up. I wanted to. I wanted to join. I gave up with my picture. Sorry. Oh well, that's okay. <laughs> um welcome this is james he's been using zim for quite some time how many apps do you think you've made in zim so far uh, I, th I think it's i think it's 200 oh my god oh, wow. that's amazing gotta love zim yeah uh and i have really been enjoying your videos of you operating your apps on the ipad or whatever the tablet oh, there. thank you uh thank they're you. they're excellent are they are they being successful for you do you think teachers are seeing them and I hope so. I mean, we, we, um, we're, we're, we're getting, I think it's about uh, 30,000 users a day. So, okay. Excellent. So for free as well. So, you know, because yeah, it's lovely. that's good. And we know Car Carl is prolific. He's uh, just made, you know, <laughs> doing things all the time. And you've been such a great help in helping the site, you know, be hold all together and stuff like that. Help with the editor as well. So thanks, Carl. And Pettis, um, thanks for helping out with the code. Hopefully you can do some more of that. Yeah, it's really nice to have somebody who enjoys um, doing some of the back end work as well, or like some of the work actually in, in Zoom. Um, and then Jesus, uh, this is Jesus, and he's a, a new user and very enthusiastic. And we're looking forward to seeing what he's making and keep on asking questions. Uh, they're helpful for everybody. So uh, yeah, <laughs> there we go. All right, let's go into the presentation, shall I? I I'm kind of going to take you a bit through the site and a bit, but what is more important to you probably is what's new in the latest version of Zim, which is numbered 014. So we've left the Zim version Zim behind, which was fun for a while. <laughs> I feel kind of like Microsoft. Oh, yes, we're we're much like Microsoft. Remember, they went through the Vista and NT and what else? <laughs> you know, they had the, the weird names and then they just went back to Windows 11. <laughs> and, and so we, we had our play. We went to Zimcat, Zim NFT, uh, Zim version Zim. And now we, I think we'll probably just go back to numbers 014. So we're still with the three the three characters, which is good. So we're in Zim 014. We expect the next one to be Zim 015. <laughs> so uh, I, I, you know, we've got the zero on there, but I'm not sure we're going to really need it. That that would imply that we're going to get to Zim version 099 and then Zim version <laughs> <Sorry>. 100. <laughs> um, we hope so. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Oh my God, uh, I might have to live beyond 100 to reach that. Uh, well. Uh, what the, the three JS is in the hundreds, but we would probably be in the hundreds if we counted every one of our releases as an individual release. We'd probably be there too. But anyway, this is major releases we're talking here. So uh, Zim zero one four, yay! Um, okay, let's uh, take a look here. This is the new site. We've made everything a little bit bigger. These are clickable, so that you can click on on the titles as well and go into the different sections. Here we are featuring the editor. Take a look at top as well. We've got the editor right in as a top link now. We've adjusted the top links a touch. We took away the news. We're not launching so much that we need a news section. So we just put that under versions. It's called versions in the about section. That gave us more room for the editor and indeed for the store here as well. So the idea behind the store is we're featuring four mobile apps. They're not quite Zaps yet or the, or the um, PWA, Progressive Web Apps. We will try and do that in the next few days. Well, actually, I'm going on vacation. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, hopefully, those will go OK in the Zap tool. It's all been planned. Um, the Zap tool usually only takes five minutes to be able to zap those up, turn them into PWAs. But there's a lot of in behind as well. For instance, they share login, they share points in a leaderboard. And that was one of the hopes was to demonstrate how we can do things like uh, log in to mobile apps and uh, handle things like collectibles. Ah, plus, it was a lot of fun to do. Um, we used some AI art, as you can see there. That's, uh, that's nice as well to show how we can bring AI art into into these types of features. It was uh, very easy. So I'm going to click on that now. Uh, here's the Zap store. And here are the, the Zaps in behind. Plasma points is a collectible thing, and the points are across the website. They're also given for other things like uh, creating uh, an editor 
file, although that's not quite hooked up yet. <laughs> so it'll be working on this afternoon. So if you make an editor file, you get some points. If you find them on the site, you get some points. If you share things on social media, you get some points. So there's, uh, it's trying to encourage people to explore Zim a bit and to get involved socially, especially the youth of the day. Uh, how are you guys, youth of the day? Not quite, the youth of, <laughs> not quite the youth of the day, <laughs> but uh, maybe we'll get there. Um, we we do have a Discord that was supposed to be for those guys. I don't know; they're not really chatting too much on Discord, but uh, maybe one day they will. Perhaps the Zim store will do it for them. <laughs> we'll see. There's a um, a leaderboard that has a leaders for the odd robots i love the odd robots game i gave a presentation at a high school it went very well we played the odd robots game uh, amongst other things we did multi-user with them as well so we had about i don't know 60 people in in the high school audience all doing multi-user where they had to figure out which robot was them as the, as the robots were moving around so i'll do a post about that uh, it was a lot of fun but in general you have to spot which one is the evil robot and then the next one, well, you have to spot two evil evil robots and then three evil robots. Then it switches over eventually to spot the good robots in amongst the evil robots. So that's a lot of fun. Dazzle Finger it demonstrates the, well, I'll show you. Dazzle Finger, this is Dazzle Finger, and it demonstrates the dragging along a path like so. So there's several ways that you can drag along the path. Are you guys hearing audio at the moment? Yes. Okay, good, because <laughs> it's quite loud in my in my ears. Um, you can choose different types. So here's a crystal. And when you choose the crystal, yeah, how do I get out of here? When you choose a crystal, I can now go off the path and I'm still dragging on the path. Oh, oh I made a mistake and I lost power. And then here's a bubble and what the bubble does is it hides the path completely and you have to remake the path. Uh, yeah, I did it. And you get more points if you uh, drag along uh, without the path at all. And that's to get you in the in the mood for actually doing these magical finger paths without even a computer. So that's the idea. Uh, the target, I guess, would be young teens who want to control their teachers, make them fall asleep or... <laughs> Or, or fall in love or whatever. whatever. So uh, that's one of the things. And your points and your power are adding up and we'll go into the leaderboard. All right, pop out of here. How do I get out of here? <laughs> there we go. Uh, odd robots looks like this. Oh. And what you're doing is trying to find the bad robot. Anybody have a guess? Oh, look at that guy. <laughs> yeah. And then it goes to finding two odd robots or bad, bad robots. Hmm. Oh, okay. That's, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. There you go. That's that game. And it continues. Mm -hmm. uh, the plasma points are hidden, like I said, amongst the, the site. So uh, let's go find one. How about we take a look at the new about section? It's basically the same as before, except we have added a vision, uh, vision area, which is kind of nice, code creativity. I'm not sure if you guys realize that code creativity works both ways. It's Zim's code creativity. So we've, we've added creativity to our code so that you guys can code your creativity. <laughs> nice, so that's where code creativity comes from. We're trying to make Zim just a bit like we're not as big as some frameworks. So as a, a sort of a boutique framework and maybe somebody that perhaps some designers will like to use as well. Uh, we, we, our code is easy enough for, sorry, sorry, designers out there. Our code is easy enough for designers to use, I think. And I think that's an advantage to Zim. There's a lot of people that you know want to make some interactive works, but maybe aren't the best in code. Uh, of course, as we always try and say as well, it's good for professionals or like you guys as well. <laughs> um, coming down, oh, we were looking for uh, we were looking for some plasma pods in here, weren't we? So here's the version section where it will will uh, also include some more here. I think we'll include 
uh, thumbnails of our latest features. I'm going to go to those soon, so we don't run, run out of time here. But anyway, these are the versions right now. But it, 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 it reviews. Thank you guys for reviews. Anybody who hasn't left a review, you're welcome to send me one. That would be great, and we can get it on there. But ah, look, oh, collect a plasma point. So it's like, ah, okay. And then that would take us into the plasma points. Thank you. Check your new plasma point and we can go in and, oh, look at all my plasma points. And this one right here, relationship time. Ah, wow, that's amazing. That's what this is. The Zim Zoom is about relationships. <laughs> so corny, <laughs> but anyway, wow. How about that? How did it know? All right, how do I get out of here? F11. So that was plasma points. And like I said, those there's 20 of them hidden uh, throughout the site that you can grab. Let's go take a look at what's new with the code. You got the idea behind the site. The docs have changed. Basically, every page has changed to the new look. Other than that, uh, there's a few treats in, in there, amongst in there, but like some new tools and, and things like that. But anyway, we'll go into the, uh, 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 the example section right now. And here are some of the new things that we're showing in, in Zim. Let's show you this one. This is cat food. Mm. And what we've got are blobs. So blobs can now be used to make physics shapes. So that had always been kind of available with Box2D with a poly, so you can make a poly shape, which has any, you give it a, a list of points and it will make a shape, a physics shape from that. But we hadn't brought that into the Zim sort of back in Zim 10, we hadn't brought it into the Zim fold. So now we figured a good way to do it would be to, if you make a blob, it will make a physics shape around those points. The only thing that you have to be careful is Box2D only supports con, yeah, thanks, only supports convex shapes. So you see how there's no negative, like a concave, a negative angle, so or an angle under 180 on the outside. <laughs> sort of hard to describe. Mm -hmm. But uh, there you go. Uh, what we, oh no, so I'm losing. The idea behind this game is you're supposed to fill up the cat here and have it not tip over. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, have it, have it, and you can't drag the, the cat. So I, I sort of failed right away. I think probably it'd be best just to start it over again. <laughs> uh, so you're supposed to fill up the cat without any of these things falling on the on the ground. So pick that up and and drop them on there. Okay, that's that's the idea, and that's ca keeping count of how many are on there. The cat though is a con. You see how this is a concave shape right here. What we've done to get around that is we've um, joined together, in this case, three shapes. So a semicircle that's actually made from, the semicircle is made from a blob. Just be warned, uh, you can't get curves with the blob. So when you put in the blob points, it draws straight lines in the physics world between the points. So it doesn't physics world curve the blob. Wouldn't that be amazing if it did, but no. Okay, so uh, you can, however, overlay a blob with curves onto the approximated square, you know, so you can do some overlaying of curved shapes. It's just, you're gonna get kind of square angles. For instance, this cat right here is a blob, but look, it's curved. Well, can you see? Yeah, but it's not, it, you see the slight, it, it's got a bunch of points. So you can take a look at the code and see how we made that curved blob thing. So the blob is the semicircle. Yay, we got a semicircle. We couldn't do that before in, in physics. So we got a semicircle made out of a blob and then we've joined two triangles to hand. And when you join it, then the concaveness is okay. So that's a concave physics example is this one. Here is something that a couple of you have been asking for, which is nice, are you ready? Dum, 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 custom cursors. So here we have uh, an emitter that is now a cursor and an animated cursor here. And then we're picking it up with a drag cursor there. So that's pretty amazing. And one of the things, uh, good claps. <laughs> All right, roars, ah! um, It was hard to do. And that's why we should have been the ones to do it so that you guys don't have to figure out how the bloody hell to do these bloody custom cursors because a bit of a pain. We got saved by point, pointer events. Pointer events 
work properly outside of the canvas. And so we know now when we can turn the custom cursor off. And to that end, we've added the, the pointer events to the frame. So much like frame has the keyboard key events, key down, key down, we've got those pointer events there as well if you need to use those. There's just four of them. It's, it's just a kind of a wrapping of it, very simple and easy. Um, so yeah, cool, huh? Okay, that's custom cursors. Um, and that can be any display object. You can, uh, how the, we- the custom, the, the custom is uh, for, uh, for any uh, object change uh, when, when I- uh, Yeah, why don't we take a look at the code here and see, and hello, Amy. I'm glad you made hello. it. Hello, yeah. yeah. Uh, welcome. Um, Amy, we just found out that James has made 200 apps. How many apps have you made in Zim? <laughs> oh, <laughs> thousands, I think. Oh, <laughs> James, you got some, you got some work to do then. <laughs> but it wasn't all you, Amy. It was your team as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do, I do something like I think uh, four hundred, something like this. Wow, you personally? So, because Jeez. every every week I make a new game. So, uh -huh. uh, and, and I do that the five five years. So yeah, and like you've been right from the very beginning. I remember in the beginning, some guy commenting and saying, hey, do you want to partner up or join? Like, what? And I went, no, nah, it's okay. You know, I'm just building Zim. You, you go ahead. And, and you're still here. And indeed, maybe I should have partnered with you. <laughs> it's still open if you want. It's still open. Excellent. Well, you never know. Okay. Um, so we're in now. Uh, I want to say you, Jack is here. Oh, Jack hello, Jack. Hi, Hello, Jack. Uh, no, okay, no, okay. <laughs> he plays my games. I make with oh, him. Excellent. He's my tester. Yeah, and he's four and a half. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, one. And he likes a lot of Zim. Zim Salabim. <laughs> okay. You should try and teach him as well. Are you teaching him in Zim Kids? So, Carl, you're teaching in Zim Kids, yeah? Um, and uh, I hope that's going well for you. Yeah. Okay, so here's the custom cursor. And what we've got is frame.cursors. And then you can say the pointer is a dragger. So the dragger is what? The dragger is this circle right here. Um, we've got the default. So the default cursor is a new emitter. I have a cursor called box. So note that these ones are CSS cursor names. Can you see those? These are CSS cursor names. So one handy thing about that is, is default will you know make your default cursor because that matches the CSS default cursor. The pointer is what we use. So we tend to make our drags by default the CSS pointer. So now we're overriding that with this circle right here. Um, I'm not sure why I in, brought this in dynamically. Oh, I think I was adding some stuff to the circle, right? I was adding those shapes to the circle and then just pass the circle in to the pointer. The box is a custom cursor name. So there is no CSS cursor called the box, I don't think. But um, I'll show you how that connects. Anyway, it's this new rectangle right here. And that's the animated rectangle. And then what we've done is we've set on the box rectangles. So on the box rectangle itself, not the cursor, but a big box on, on the stage, we said cursor box, so cur. So for the cursor system to work, you need to use cur, round brackets, which we're usually using anyway, rather than dot cursor equals. Okay, the dot cursor equals is a, a create.js construction. We brought it into a short chainable cur and we, sort of hijack the cur to make the cursor system all work. It's not all that much in there. Um, so you're not, you don't need to worry about performance or any overhead or anything like that. It's just really probably 20 lines of code sort of to make all of this stuff work. So that's good. Yeah. All right. So you can check out that example to see it work. And oops, I delete that. That's all right. And how do I get back to my browser? Uh, here's another game. This was the first one that we made that has the, the blob shapes mm. with physics as well um, into a more serious game, which is a lot of fun. You're trying to keep these balls from fermenting or from falling through this thing, and it gets harder and harder as it goes. 
and you're sort of pushing these things up. Every time you touch a house, it takes away points. So you see how it's going red, it's taking away points and you're supposed to just let it ferment like that. But if it goes too far, oh, I hit the bottom and I lost. So you're basically trying to keep those two balls um, up. It, it just happened to be, I threw in some house shaped blobs and hmm. turned them into physics. I threw a ball in there and I was just playing around with it. I went, oh, okay, it's kind of fun. I was right, you know, like all these weird shapes and turned into a little game there for us. Well, That's really good. Is, is, by, is by the shape, uh, he, he, he put this, the physics uh, by the step? That's right, that's blob. I don't know if you missed that when you first came in. New blob, dot add physics. Oh. And it works just like oh, new oh, circle, oh. dot add physics. Yeah, isn't that nice? Uh, and, and so it doesn't matter how, how much the side you have. No, you can have as many sides, but what does matter is it needs to be convex. It needs to be all outer okay. angles. It can't be a concave because box 2D doesn't support that. But yeah. we showed how you right. can do that with this cap. So mm -hmm. that's about when you came wow. in, I think. Okay. Uh, all right, Dazzle Finger, we saw a bit of that. Here is a work that I was doing with you, Amy, I think was to get. So here's Ontario, for instance, in Hamilton, I've got Hamilton inserted. And now I'm going to say, well, I'm in Dundas and I'm going to insert it before Hamilton. So now Dundas shows up inserted before Hamilton like wow. that. Um, yeah, that was, that was tricky, that stuff. Uh, all right. So that and we'd always I, planned. I, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's all it you made it. Yeah. Yeah, it, there's no way that I don't think anybody would have been able to, to do that with what you had been given already. So we had to go in and um, do some major work on the hierarchy, uh, which is what is uh, creating these expandable lists. And it was very tricky. It was so tricky that when we launched it, we didn't do it because it was tricky and we just wanted to get the hierarchy launched. But we always knew that we would probably want to edit that hierarchy rather than constantly remaking a list. And uh, it turned out very nicely. So thanks for the prompting there, Amy, on, on that. We, we can uh, export it to, to back to the JSON? Uh, most likely, yeah. I think at any time you can grab the tree data. So if you grab the tree data and save it to JSON, bring it back again, it'll remake from that. Yeah, because I know that that's important for you, isn't it? To be able to yeah, save things right. and publish things. Okay, so that's that one. Uh, next. Bloop. Plasma points, you saw. Are you guys planning on collecting some plasma points? <laughs> yeah? Good. Are you too old to collect that plasma points? <laughs> I hope not. No. <laughs> yeah. so I'm not sure if we've quite got the youth of the day. It would be nice to have somebody on a leaderboard for who's collected the most plasma points, <laughs> other, other than me and Carl. <laughs> Carl was already collecting them before I launched. Uh, anyway. Carl, stop! It's not it's not ready yet. How'd you get in there? How do you find these things? Um. Anyway, odd robots. We saw slide velocity. Ah, oh, I can't. This is. I'm really sorry. We should have done this a long time ago. I'm embarrassed. Uh, that is so much nicer than it was before. Um, as as you can see there. So that now is default on our our lists and. On anywhere, uh, if you um, slide, so when you throw something, so this this thing right here can be thrown now, whoosh, like that, and it slides better. Note that it's got snap as well in it. That was tricky to do. So uh, there it is. It, we throw it and it snaps back into to place. We also decided to on drag make an adjustment to drag in the parameters. Usually I don't, or we don't, I don't think use too many drag parameters, only the boundary right at the beginning. We do on top and we do all, drag all, but those are so far along that we, we almost always go to the Zim Duo technique to get there anyway. So we did insert as the second parameter to drag an axis. So this one right here is for instance, drag round brackets null because no boundary. And then we just said horizontal. So this object now only drags horizontal. It's got no boundary, but dragging horizontal. Mm -hmm. And you can do that with vertical as well. So that's nice. I, I mean, you still, I was thinking about it. Usually if you are gonna drag horizontal, usually you want a boundary anyway, like to stop it going off the edges, in which case you can still do that with a boundary, uh, mm -hmm. but the boundary would have a, a height of zero, 
and you know it, the conventional way is the axis based off of where you locate it on the canvas that's right yeah where it starts yeah so it's probably dynamic so i think you can change the axis and just reset those so isn't that nice we've got um that was a velocity equation rather than a damping equation. So we had a damping equation before, which slowed it down too quickly. So we would throw it and it, would, you know, it was the wrong equation and just always knew it was slightly wrong. <laughs> but uh, we had a new user. I can't remember. I don't think it was you, Jesus. It was somebody else who um, had come on and said, look, we want this to look like you know most web pages on mobile and ours didn't. And so now, now it does, so that's good. Uh, the soft keyboard, this was another one for Emmy, um, where when we start typing here, when you give focus to this, the whole stage moves up. So most people don't know that you can actually move the stage. You shouldn't really be moving the stage for most of the time. Uh, but anyway, when <clears throat> stage is a container, you can set it X and Y. And so we've just moved that up. Uh, so that this is now higher and now we can type here and when we click it it goes back down again so for, it's for label or for uh, for uh, oh. a text input too what was that it's for la label input or, or uh, for uh, text area this is it's for text area as well uh but this is a text input so it's text input and text area um a label itself is so Yes. isn't if you're using a label you'd probably be using our keyboard in which case you wouldn't need to bring it up yes, um, cool. yeah okay so that's that's it there uh yay that's uh, pretty easy to do along with that too it, it's not in here maybe but it's in the updates uh, well hang on are we almost at where we should be going into the updates yeah that was the last sort of visual example so oh. let's move mm -hmm. into the uh updates if that's okay with you I do want to leave some time for uh, questions, 11.30, so I think we're good. Let me go into the updates here. So where are we now? Docs, and then updates. So the new site, again. Um, here are the updates. So information about the store, collecting points, information about the new site header, the new site in general with all of the pages that we've updated the editor updates maybe we'll come back to the editor because there's more updates uh, in the editor and they're still kind of ongoing as well mobile system keyboard stage shift uh, yes and for the text area as well um, what i was wanting to say is we have a now a way to capture key key down i don't know if this is if it maybe it's coming up later uh capturing the key down I don't know if you've noticed, but when you're in an iframe and you press on the iframe to or press on the canvas in an iframe to give it focus, it still doesn't have keyboard focus. You've got to press on the iframe outside of the canvas for some reason. I think it must be a bug in in the canvas or in HTML in general. Uh, or it's probably some sort of stupid safety thing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we doubt it. But anyway, uh, default not uh, fixed. No, no def allow default. I'm not sure. I don't think so. No, I don't think it's an allow default issue. No, because when, uh, yeah. So, first of all, we we don't want to allow default anyway because we don't want the canvas moving around unless there is text in there. What we do though is we trick it. So when we st we we provided now um, a little a function in the frame that will make a message for you that says press for keyboard and you can customize that message press for keyboard access but what we do is if you show that message we take off pointer events on the canvas completely or we take them off the canvas and what happens is when you go to click that to gain keyboard focus it clicks through the canvas to the iframe gives you keyboard and we capture that and bring, bring back um, pointer events on the canvas so yay, uh, and that's that's very handy. That's things like it would always bug us on CodePen, for instance. It's in a it's in a it's in an iframe in, in CodePen, and you have the same problems. And the editor, you had the problems, and now that's uh, that uh, that's avoided. Also, it's a nice easy way to do a message saying press the canvas for keyboard access. 
uh, because it's kind of built in. So that's that's here somewhere. You, you'd have to see it. Global custom cursor. So we went through the examples of the global custom cursor here using the cur, how we do it in behind. We can scale and animate. So, you know, scale your display object, obviously, to fit uh, proper cursor size. Although as much as you can, you should be bringing in images or stuff that is scaled without scaling. <laughs> um, so, I mean, don't bring in a 600 by 600 PNG and scale it down to 30 by 30 or something like that. Okay. Um, Keeping the cursor on the top, that's built in for us, but there may be, if you say have an interval that keeps putting things up at the top of the stage, the custom cursor won't deal with that. You'd have to put stuff up at the top of the stage and then just use this one right here, uh, f.cursor object. So there's a frame has uh, stored the cursor object and just put that on the top, dot, top. So after you add something manually, in an interval or something like that later. Uh, and that comes up on the top, just make the cursor come back up on top. But otherwise, for all of our stuff, like dragging on top and stuff, all that is um, handled uh, automatically, which is nice. Blob physics, we dealt with the blob physics. Hierarchy list, we dealt with the hierarchy list. Code hints, ah, right, okay, this is an important one. I've had a co-op student in the end. Our co-op student's not here. Oh, maybe they'll watch the video though. Uh, he's been great, really, really smart guy and works in the sort of the Node.js kind of node package manager world, which is handy. And even though he is so smart, we still don't have our bloody require working really easily with node package manager. Uh, it's so weird and complex that can, it can be anyway. But uh, <laughs> in the end, it will be simple. It's just trying to figure out how to do it. Um, so we've been working in the back end of it, and we've moved our typings. So we've got the TypeScript typings into a node package itself, which can be then pointed to from VS Code, for instance. And yeah, that gives us type that gives us IntelliSense in um, in VS Code and other editors as well. Which means as you're typing, it will tell you what the parameters are. The drawback, or the, the which is good, good and bad. I don't know. I don't think everybody needs it <laughs> because there's a lot of parameters you're typing away, and it's like. Bah! But anyway, um, the drawback is it only works in JavaScript files. It doesn't work in HTML files with JavaScript. So usually, I tend to code in the HTML file right in JavaScript in the HTML file. It, it won't pick it up there. So I think that's a weakness or a, something's wrong with VS Code. Uh, so. We're looking into if there's anything that can be done with that, some sort of plugin or, or thing that we can add. Some of you, many of you may be already just typing in JavaScript files anyway. So in other words, it needs to be in a JS file, a .js or a TypeScript file, .ts. This is extension that we need to install in the VS Code? No, no. In, in VS Code, you uh, open up a terminal here, the steps right here. Okay. You open a terminal using control shift backslash or find the terminal. And okay. then you type npm i zim types. And that's it. Ah, and after okay. you do that, you, you get typings. So that's not too bad. And it, it works for uh, object two? If I, if I pass object, no, 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 the, all the parameters? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so if I go new circle, it tells me all the stuff that that you can put into the circle. And we, we there's a new hints page right here. So I'll press this. This is uh, the code hints page. It's available as well from the, the script file. And here are some tips on uh, what you might be expecting to see with your code hint. There's the instructions on doing it. Probably should do a screenshot of that. Oh, and a plasma <laughs> point. Oh my gosh, you can collect a plasma point right here. Right in this very spot. Ah, it's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so that that will help you with uh, that frame pointer events. Yep, okay, so that was mentioning that we do have the frame pointer events are available. One, th one advantage that gives, for instance, pointer up will be, uh, will, will trigger an up even if you're off the stage. So that's one thing that a mouse up didn't do or a press up. So if you're moving around and you leave the stage and you press up, um, I can't remember, we built, we, we captured that there's another way of capturing that that's more complicated, 
that was built into drag, for instance, so that it stops dragging if you mouse up. But if you yourself want to do something like that, you might want to try a pointer up. And same with the pointer um, enter and pointer leave. Those are better than the stage leave. And I think that CreateJS gave us a couple events for leaving the stage. It doesn't leave the stage if you go on to uh, off of an iframe. It doesn't leave the stage if, if you've got your console open. You know, so there. Whereas the pointer, the pointer enter and pointer leave does actually capture those. So that's kind of cool. Squiggle and blob have color. So color, circle, and circle border color. Sorry, circle color and circle border color. So you know the little circles that are in squiggle and blobs. Previously, you couldn't change the colors of those. Now there's a parameter for both uh, blobs and squiggles to be able to change that. And that was inserted just in next to stick color. So you've got a break there, which means if you if you have loaded up your blobs or squiggles with long sets of of um, what are they called parameters, it may be may be broken for you if you up update to your new one. I think stick color is probably like the tenth parameter or something like that. So most likely it won't affect you, but that's a break. Keyboard control ah right here. So a keyboard message method. Uh, yeah. To the frame. So you just go frame dot keyboard message. It will pop up a message. You can pass in a, I believe you can pass in a custom what you want to say there. And that does your keyboard capturing. And then a series of stuff here for the general updates. Uh, I don't think we need to go into those directly. Some improvements and changes. What's this one? Oh, the blur detect was a little bit broken. I recognize that when we had multiple canvases, uh, there was something in there that uh, when I came back, those little plasma points that were rising were being added back again to a different canvas. So some of you may have noticed that in the past and I kind of went, well, I didn't have it, I didn't have it. <laughs> um, but uh, it turns out, yeah, that there was something in there that may have caused that. So hopefully that's all, all been fixed there. That's why it's marked as an improvement or sorry, <laughs> should have been marked as improvement, <laughs> not important. Um, yeah, okay, need to edit that. And improvement, anything that you see marked as improvement it might affect a uh, better performance or something or like a bug that might happen. So otherwise, normally when you create an app, I had some questions about this. Normally when you create an app, just leave it in the same version of Zim that you created and it's probably good. But you should keep your eye on improvements uh, just in case there's something that might improve. Like now I would suggest if you have lists, I would suggest trying to update to the latest Zim so that those run smoother. Okay, when when people are are scrolling them like that. And that might be a lot of you using the lists, I think. Okay, so there we go. There are the breaks, not too many. We haven't done any patches yet. And we've still got to do all of the updating of the various things. We've we've done the site, but we have to do the, the bubbling videos, et cetera. I'm going away on vacation on Wednesday. It's my anniversary today, 30 years married. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, some of those things may come afterwards. We'll see if we can get a couple bubbling videos going on on the main on those main examples. That would be nice for people to see. And we have yet to up upload the CDN. So the CDN is currently showing Zim uh, or the if we go to the code section here, we've still got Zim zero two being loaded in oh. here. <laughs> so in the next uh, day or two, maybe this afternoon even will be uh, providing Zim 014. It is, it is there in the CDN. Uh, uh, all the examples are using it. So you're welcome to use that, but it's not there as an ES6 module yet. And we have to make sure that our automatic system that updates all that, we'll put that in place. All right, so I think that's, um, that's kind of the overview there. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe less comments in the code the 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 frame is a f or something like that they just have to find oh. uh, mm. the somewhere no all the comments so you can see it's less code and uh, the comments, uh, co comments too much. where sorry comments where in the code in the little code uh, preview template 
the preview template here. Yes, down. It's too much blue, you know. Fit, fill, full tag. It's all in the docs, you know. Just remove it. Okay. It's less uh, information. All right. Well, I think this needs to be here. Uh, what? Anybody else? What do you guys think? I don't think um, so anymore. I like all the info. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we, are your comments like, below? If you click on old, you can see it, you know? Old, you can see it, but new, you don't have to see it anymore. Eh? Okay, well, we'll bring it into consideration and yeah. Hmm. Um, does anybody have any questions about uh, the new stuff or anything, as a matter of fact? Uh, it looks really good. The, about uh, the edit, though. Sorry, why don't, uh, is that Amy and Pettis? Pettis? Yes, I, I asked about the edit, though. If you can so, show us how, how uh, you save the files and how you make uh, a new, how, how, we, how do you use it? Uh, right, new, yes, uh, we forgot to show the editor. Yes, indeed, okay, yes. good. Um, let me go to the editor. Was there somebody else that was going to ask something or say something? So more about Stop. learn, learn. Maybe also make it possible to have the editor uh, uh, preview. Uh, yes. The print, the print out. If you click on the, the, the red circle, you go directly to the print version. Okay, yeah. So bring in some print, um, right? Because when you're learning, it's good for people to use QR codes to get into the examples and stuff like that. So talk about how to do that. Okay, that almost comes into a teach section again. We we got rid of the teach set teach section, <clears throat> but perhaps maybe what we should do is create a section in the learn section for teachers and then describe how these tools could be used for teachers. Okay, good point. Um, did anybody else have something there to say? Um, question about the custom cursors. Yes. It's, it still allows uh, like um, Canvas interaction. It doesn't... Yes. Um, okay. On those, on the cursor objects, the mouse uh enabled has been turned off so that when you press it goes through the cursor to gotcha. the canvas just like always um, and then by the way all the regular cursors can be used in conjunction with so for instance if you only want the normal default like normal pointer or whatever that's called the normal cursor uh this, then you can guy? use that yeah <laughs> well, it's not even that guy it's the little okay. triangle the oh, triangle yeah. one. So if you want the triangle for default, go ahead and then have a different one for dragging, which is a custom pointer. So they, you don't have to have all custom cursors. You can just have certain ones if you want. Hmm. Uh, okay, good, thanks. Um, what do you guys think? Do you like the site and the updates? Is that exciting? Really <laughs> good, really good. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, it's great. All right, cheers, thank you. Uh, let's take a look since we're here at the editor. We've been having some editor woes in the uh, in the realm hmm. of we're getting logged out by the server, it seems. Um, so we're using PHP session variables and that and along with the cookie that um, the cookie seems to be fine. The session variables are getting logged out for some reason. And I think we're still at, at those woes, although I do see that I haven't been logged out. Let's see if that's actually true. Do I have my my files load? Yeah, I do have my files, um, shapes. So we're still uh, working through some things here, but we've just uh, been successful with, with others. You would log in, or here, I'll log out. Uh, when you log in, you choose to sign up down on the right-hand side, or sorry, sign up, yeah, on the right-hand side, or sign in. I'm gonna go sign in. Now that I've signed in, I have my files that I can load. So I have a bunch of files that I can load here. Animating, okay, so I load that one. And there, there it was over here. Uh, the code comes in. There's a bunch of zaps as well, and they're on the right-hand side. We're, what we're planning on doing oh. <clears throat> is, I think the features are good because people when people first come to Zim, we want to show them what Zim can do. And so we might roll out a few more features there, but we don't want to be to, to be too overwhelming and more, more along the lines of what advantages Zim has over other frameworks. That's kind of what we're putting in the features. 
uh, basics. Then we've got the basics, the mid advanced, and we've got sort of full, full, more full mm -hmm. examples. Uh, what I'd like to do though, is make one that is new for Zim, like new, what's new. And I'll add the code for the, the new stuff that just launched with Zim 014 in that. So there'll be another bar that opens up with new. We're almost at the search. So these bars kind of open up. Those are all of my lists. Uh, lists are pretty amazing. And Amy, you're going into teaching as well. I would highly recommend teaching with the editor, making lists of things that you wanna teach, and then you can share those lists with the students. Uh, Carl's already working on that. I'll be doing that with my students as I go forward. But I'm not going to go into the list right now, but just know that you can compile any of these uh, zaps that you want into a list, share that list with um, other people, and they open it up and they'll see the list and, and can look at the zaps and stuff. And they, they can fork it? Yes, they, you can choose two different ways. You can, you can say, here is a list of stuff. You can show them the code and not let them edit the code, not let them fork okay. the code. And that is forcing them, if you want, to force them to actually type it. And I like that idea, you know, hey, here's a nice simple example. We're showing you the code, but I don't want you to copy the code. You need to type it. <laughs> so on the right, you're forcing them to type it in what you see on the left. And, and uh, I like that idea. We do that oh. with Zim. Oh, Zim some remarks. You can drop and drag and drop the code. And that works. So maybe find out how you do. Yeah, I can't can figure out how to stop that. I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, so hopefully the kids won't know how to drag and drop. <laughs> um, there might be a way we could look into it again. But when we tried, I remember it couldn't. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, you can also like it's just basically which directory. Uh, uh, there's a learn and a teach that shows up, and if you pass them into to learn. I think it makes it so that they can't edit it or copy it. If you pass it into teach, then it can, or, or vice versa. I can't remember which way it is. So there are some nuances there. Read about it in the guide. We have to update the guide for some later things. One of the most important things now that we're going to see is, Amy, that was your idea, maybe a bit of Carl in there at some point. But uh, the info currently is linking to this information right here. But where it will link through eventually, let's see their shapes. If I go, currently this one at the moment is working. If I hit code, then what we're doing is we're toggling the bottom here. Uh, let me show you that again. So here's the zap. It's now, um, you see how it says view? I can view it here. Now the view says full. And if I hit full, it views it in full. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if that works for us. It's okay. Anyway, the code does the same kind of thing. I hit code. There's the code. Now it turns to info and I can get info. It won't be the only way to get info, but it's currently the only way. So in the future, this info <clears throat> will link through to a page like this. And so we'll, when we go to file right up here, no, I think it's right here. Right here, there will be a link to the info page as well. This will be centered. Uh, here's a screenshot. Cool. So we can make screenshots. So when you uh, create, when you create a uh, a zap, uh, it will make a screenshot for you. But later, at a later date, you can choose a different screenshot uh, by selecting screenshot. It will show you where, wherever it's at at the moment. Anyway, there will also be an info page. Here's what's on the info page. <clears throat> Uh, so automatically, every every edit will be in a zap directory. So here's the zap directory. This is an HTML page. So .html also can go on the end of that. And, and that means it's searchable by search engines. Uh, you can share it, et cetera. It's got a QR code that will link through to a full one. So if you if you take a picture of this, it's a full version of this. That means, you can see the you somebody you share your app with somebody and then they can just click this and see the app. There's also a print thing. This is what Carl was talking about for for teachers, where these QR codes could be printed and it would link through to any of these sections. So thanks for the prompting there, Carl. But the QR codes must be selectable. Eh? If you click on it, also eh? no, not no for the moment. And the app also, if you click on the app, it should open in the full version also. Nothing no. is nothing is clicking on this page. This is for this is for taking a, a picture. Yes, but you can make it 
if it's a, a zim version you can make click it also eh? so it's really very easy to have a, a preview of, of all the possibilities if you're on a computer without touch uh, and, and you see the QR code, you know. Why wouldn't a, you be here on a computer on the info page, though, where you can click on the things right here? Also, shapes you can click on the shapes. Okay, you can whatever, click uh, whatever, 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 whatever. Yeah, and you can click on this. So that is the page that you want to show people. You don't want to show people a QR thing that was made for printing. But anyway, okay, well, it can be done. It's just it's open another window. So then what do we do? You got to click it and we got to, we'll have another window open on, on top. And it's just sort of like it was made for printing. Uh, I know, but I want to make a book of all the zaps, you know, where they are applicable. So you can turn the page of page one, page two, and then you or have clickable pages made with zip of your zaps. Uh, you would have to make those pages yourself. Um, that That's like an HTML page. So anyway, whatever, we can take it offline. Um, where was I? Uh, the, also, the info can it be inside the iframe? I was just uh, suggesting the idea you have the, the docs inside the iframe, but the, the info page also into the little screen. Why should it open full screen, you know? Uh, yeah, that might be a good idea. So when we hit the info here, it would um, open up inside of this thing. I'm not sure. We're limited on how many of these guys we have due to... Uh, when it when it squeezes, we can we'll think about it. I like having a separate page. If you're in the iframe, if, if you're already here, you're already looking at all this stuff. So the info page is like a landing page or a share page, like a page that you would share. And that's the idea. We don't really need it in here, I don't think, because all the info pages is info. linked here. Oh. Info is yellow and the info button at the bottom. So the info is different. Eh? Maybe call it another. Uh, uh, um, uh, it's, 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 it's HTML, maybe, because it's an HTML page. You know, then you know it's an HTML page uh, that will open. It's only four letters. Well, um, OK, let's work on that later. Um, this info right here will soon link to the whole page and as mentioned as well back in the file. So were there any questions <clears throat> about the about the editor? That's great. Uh, uh, we discussed on this in, in the in the Slack. Uh, I think if uh, Google not found this uh, page, be great for this oh. because uh, we have a lot of pages uh, of them in Google and then when someone looking for uh, some uh, how to build game, something like this, you can find it uh, from, the, from these pages. Yeah. That's so, what they wrote about the description and the, the, all the metadata uh, <clears throat> for any, any page of the people making the editor. And if it be published, and the, the people can find it public. So it that's public. right. Yeah, the more these pages get out, uh, the people share them. Um, uh, I think that it should all be selectable. Did we do everything right there in getting that page to be an HTML page that is found in editor, as far as you can yeah. see, Amy? Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Yeah, it does have all the metadata. And, and another nice huh. thing is it's got a, a unique screenshot each. So that yeah. means when yeah. you share it on Facebook, it's a picture of your app, <laughs> not a picture of the Zim thing. And that was what I, was- Like in the code, code pen, yeah. Very, yes, very, very... like CodePen, exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, so the, um, uh, I like it. How, um, uh, how would you, I saw that where it says you can add external scripts, external files. Yeah. And he says, uh, URLs only. Yeah. Um, how about for testing? Like if we're like, we're testing them here, they're not uploaded yet on a URL. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Um, I guess you might want to just use your own editor then and test locally mm -hmm. if you don't have it on a URL. Um, but this is this is external. I, I wasn't really thinking of it as you're coding Zim. You would be coding the Zim in the editor. 
this is more like uh, you need um, uh, an animated GIF script. Like, you know, Giffler is an animated, uh, we need an extra script for that. We've actually built that into Zim, but it helps with animated GIFs. That means you could put a link to their CDN here mm -hmm. and bring that in. So this is sort of like helper files that you might want as well. That's what that would script extra script thing was for oh, not, okay, not for you coding your your own test files oh yeah, i see that would see. that would still happen in the editor itself yeah yeah, right. yeah, yeah. i get it good question uh, another question hmm. when i have hmm. favorites apes, i should like them to above my files you know because i need them much more to click on the know the faves or under the files hmm. it's strange hmm. uh, to think about where are So the saved things that are your faves. So let's- No, uh, you have to make a fave. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to remember how to do files. that. Okay, so I have faves and they're under saved and it goes under the files and you would rather have this the faves above. go above the files. Otherwise you have always to click and open, uh, close the files. Because there are less faves than files, you know? Uh, perhaps, yeah. Okay, um, we'll consider it. Saves above files. Uh, but anyway, these these types of requests, uh, you're welcome to just put them in requests. That would be easier to um, handle at that time. Uh, any other questions about the editor before we move on? We're having, like I said, a problem with uh, keeping ourselves logged in. Maybe also the files, can they have a number? Because your features have oh, wait, a number. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Um, if it's a request, put it in requests. <laughs> we can deal with that later. <laughs> yeah, I know you are a man of many requests or, or <laughs> ideas. So, uh, but I, I will admit, I hardly ever touch the editor. So I'm glad to hear that people are doing it, though. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it might, it's been, it will be very handy for us. We were just looking at, for instance, the Explorer directory where there's 300 files in there and they're kind of like hard to get at and understand as like, we're just, they were just um, us making things in the early days. So many of them are also older code. But if we had started with the <clears throat> editor to start, we, we're about to bring in searching here and that will be pretty cool, the searching is just another one of these bars. So it'll be a, one of these bars right up top. You open it up and you can search and filter it by um, uh, all of the different types of things that you can <laughs> search for, like the description or the title or the whatever this thing was called. The um, Could you uh, almost the embed the, the search bar into the header bar somehow? I don't think I don't think we need to. I think it'll be nicer being able to just have it in amongst here. We did think of doing it kind of like we did with the docs up here, but there's a little bit too much in the search to really put up top properly. So um, uh, we've got a Zaps version it's where it's right up here. I think it'll work because then all the results stay in there. You can collapse the results and it would just works just like, imagine this would be the search results right here. Bing, there's your search results. Yeah, if you don't yeah. want to see them I, anymore, collapse it. I meant the search and you see where it says advanced, have like a, a, a text, like a text input. Yeah, that's that's exactly yeah. it. Yeah, it's it's like that. Yeah, so you, under the search here, you'll have a, a bar of, your check boxes and your search entry. And it, it searches live as well. So as you're sort of typing and checking, um, because we, we will we'll grab all that data and, and bring it, we've got it all pretty well here anyway. And so we'll just sort of live filter through that. Co-op students working on that. That's why it's not done. Ooh, <laughs> burn. <laughs> no, but anyway, I, I, I'm sure he's coming close. <laughs> uh so we'll see note as well and i hope it's it's going okay we can't change these things up top now if we're looking at it here you have to kind of go over onto the test side then you can start to change these things oops <laughs> all right do you remember this one that was for you patis wasn't it like uh animating along um a path was it to get from here to there or randomly animating along the path That's what this yeah was. Yeah, how'd that project work out? Uh, I, I asked it to, to 
Oh, you asked you? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice. How are we doing for time? It is um, 12. So that's uh, sort of the the hour up. You guys were very well behaved. And um, thank you again for using Zim. Dan, tell us about the uh, above phone uh, gray out. You did an update for the gray out uh, check marks. Yes, that's right. It is grayed out. If you go and view, you can't access these things. It, it, it now brings it in in the right dimensions. That was one thing we were having a problem with. And now, if any time you view a zap, it views it only in the dimensions that you've saved it. Um, and if you ever want to change that and play around with it, that was the idea. We wanted to maybe play around with that. Then you need to do the code copy over the code here, yes, I'll overwrite, and then do a test. Now that I've got that code copied over here, I can go and change around the layouts. But that's that's obviously a problem. You know, If the thing was des designed for a certain layout and you do this, it might not have been made responsive. It may have been re made, re made responsive, but um, maybe it wasn't. So uh, that'll stop us from showing stuff that looks like this. <laughs> Thanks hey. a lot. That's my question. That's my question. <laughs> All right. Um, well, let's see. Do we have anything for you guys? Try out the store. We haven't got the PWAs in yet, but it still works. Uh, it will work on mobile. It'll also work on desktop, all that store stuff. Oh. Uh, get involved. Try out the games. Do you promise? Try out a game. Do you get on that leaderboard so that it's not uh, like only me on the leaderboard? I, I should probably clear the leaderboard because I've been, you know, I've been testing. It's not fair. Then, <laughs> uh, yes. In another uh, example, your examples. Why are they not inside the iframe of the editor? You know, so I can click easily on the examples, or will they go automatically to the editor? Um, the plan is to make a, a section called new. So right in here in the zaps, uh, we're going to make one of these things be. Oh, not there. So under demos, here's features, basics, mid, advanced, and full. One of those will say new, probably the top one. And that will have the latest code in it right in the editor. I just haven't gotten to it. Yeah. So, but maybe also you have examples, you have bits, you have, you know, that kind of all examples, because now there are some bits somewhere, somewhere, and mid, yeah. and somewhere. And that's difficult to, to understand. Maybe a bits, and then you have. Simple, difficult, you know? Hmm. Um, yeah, the plan is to bring in, I think, all of the bits. That, again, was uh, student co-op uh, work. And we got some of them in and all of the code pens. Uh, so yeah, still working on getting more of those examples in there. Uh, eventually, probably a link right from doc examples uh, right in so you don't have to cut and paste. That would be nice to see. There's a fair number, like there's something like 400 doc examples. So that's a fair, you know, undertaking to kind of organize all that. But down the road, I can see that uh, that would be nicer. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh. <laughs> you, you're here in docs. I go under mm, what, like circle. There's an example right here. I press a button and it goes right into my editor. <clears throat> right, right now, it's not too bad. You pick it up and paste it into your editor and test it. Um, but, <laughs> you know, kind of be nice to have a, an auto copy over yeah but then but i want to tell you you have an example page already the the image so maybe a grid instead of the lines of all the examples uh you know if you have the zaps only a, a grid view of all the pictures so you, you know oh you, you don't have to read anymore you have to oh this is what i want and you can click. oh uh so ha, that's a great idea yeah so you're saying that little previews right here rather than the titles yeah yeah so you you've got the pictures list now. More previews you know uh-huh <clears throat> yeah uh the way you do it you have also a toggle view right or not view. toggle and get exactly. the previews yeah good idea if we've got if we've got you know 300 of these things that's 300 previews all all preloaded might have to consider it uh, perhaps there's an perhaps there's an alternative page that we could load, um, like uh, go to preview page. That would be like, you know, but once again, once again Carl just keeps on getting me to remake CodePen. Um, you have, <laughs> like, you have uh, made, I know, you know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. L yay, let's leave it at that. Uh, it's good to see all of your smiles. I'm so glad that we're able to make things that work well for you. Uh, continue to build as much as you can as well. We didn't really get to talk about how, uh, you know, we can get more people into Zim. Maybe that's a, a Zoom for another day. But uh, keep on sharing if you can. And it was lovely to see you all again. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Dan. You're brilliant. Thanks, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye, you guys. And goodbye Thank out there you. in recording land Thank if you're watching you. it. Yep. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. How do, how do I close this thing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop share. Uh, okay. I love that, Dan. It's so good. Uh, that that's good. Thank, thanks, James. So, and thanks, Carl, for, for all the to try. What's that? Thank you. There was so much there that I want to try. It's really good. Okay, yeah. Our, our, I'm sort of surprised. Like I said, I thought we were kind of slowing down. This is a little bit less than maybe some of the other major releases, but uh, it's still a lot, and it was important things like the custom yeah. cursor and the and the swiping speed and and getting blob into physics mm. is very it's nice. Brilliant! There's loads there right. to look at. It's really good. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Enjoy your anniversary. You're, you're very welcome. And my holiday. I'm I'm going. Let's see. On your map, where am I going? I'm going to the the Bahama sort of areas. Oh, uh, Saint oh, Martin. Oh. St. Martin, oh, wow. that's right, D down in there somewhere. I'll be on a beach soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, enjoy. Thank you All so right. much, Dan. Yeah, cheers. Bye-bye, James. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see. We're probably still recording. Pause or stop recording.